Hi there. Hey there. Can you change the background to blue? Can you change your own box color to red? No, your own, the assistant. No, that's mine. Change that back to the other color. Uh, can you change yours to blue? The one that says assistant. Can you change the background color to uh, black? And change the blue color back to uh, dark gray. And change the start conversation button to let's go with purple uh, font. Can you change the font of the let's go to purple? Can you stop or I should say uh, stop it sure. now? All right, I'll stop now. If no, you no. Uh, can you change the stop button to say stop it now? Now, you forgot to add now. Just make it say stop it now. Like stop it now, all three words. Okay, cool. Thank you. Can you change the title to OpenAI real time voice chat? Not the title of the browser, the title at the, of the web page, the title that shows in the web page. Can you also add www.echohive.live there? Echo Hive, like Echo, like Echo Location. Yeah, Echo with an H. Yeah, sweet. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'm glad I could help. Uh, we can do this actually with just client side function calling, which we'll take a look at because our Python Fast API backend with the slash session route only serves to actually return the credentials. And we are actually connecting with the real time voice tool entirely from the front end called ephemeral credentials. So our API key actually is only used for this particular session. So in the JavaScript, uh, we're gonna get my AI code explainer explain all this, but we have two functions. One is to get page HTML, and the other one is to manipulate element with the selector action and value. So these are our two functions. And in the function definition down here, we just define them, get page HTML, get the HTML for the current page. Always use this before manipulating elements. Maybe you've seen that sometimes it's making a mistake. Perhaps it's not actually using this possibly. And the other function definition is the manipulate elements. We are defining these uh, like we normally would with function calling. As you see, the parameters this takes is a selector of the type string, uh, action is to perform like set text, set HTML, stuff like that, and value of that. Uh, so this is uh, this is about it. So let's get my AI code explainer to explain the code, uh, the code files for this uh, entire Fast API app, and the AI code explainer is available at my Patreon. If you do decide to become a patron, you uh, not only get access to these projects, but also 400 plus other ones, including the future projects. Uh, thank you. And, and now let's get to, to the code review. In this snippet, we import necessary libraries to set up our Fast API application. Fast API is used to create the web server and define endpoints, whereas HTTPX enables HTTP client requests. We also utilize OS for environment variable management, term color for colored terminal output, and JSON for handling JSON data. Next, we define constants such as OpenAI API key, model ID, and voice for OpenAI API interactions. An instance of the Fast API app is created with the title Real Time Voice Chat. Static files are mounted under the slash static path, allowing serving of static assets like HTML and JavaScript files. The root function serves the main HTML page of the application, specifically index.html from the static directory. In case the HTML file is unreadable, it throws an HTTP 500 error. This code forms the foundation for setting up an interactive web interface, but connecting users to the backend logic. Here, we define the slash session endpoint that creates a session with the OpenAI API. This function is crucial for managing real-time voice interactions. Upon receiving a request to this endpoint, the function attempts to establish an async HTTP connection with the OpenAI API using HTTPX.AsyncClient. 
It is here that the session for the GPT-40 model is requested, passing necessary headers and data payload including the model ID and voice parameters. Responses from the API are checked for successful status codes. If any errors arise, a descriptive HTTP exception is raised. Successful responses return the session details in JSON format. This session creation step is a cornerstone for the real-time functionality, enabling direct interactions with real-time AI models. The code ensures any issues surface prominently with colored terminal output. Finally, this segment sets up the application to run as a standalone server when the script is executed directly. It employs Uvicorn, a lightning-fast GI server implementation for Python, to run the app on localhost 8000 with hot reloading enabled. This makes for efficient development, as changes to the code are automatically picked up without manually restarting the server. This setup allows for local testing before deployment, ensuring everything works perfectly on your local machine before hitting the production stage. This code represents the index.html file, which forms the user interface of our application. The document begins by defining a responsive HTML structure compatible with modern browsers designed to support interactivity thanks to libraries like Daisy UI, Tailwind CSS, and Anime.js. The main components involve displaying the real-time voice chat interface, including a status indicator, containers for displaying waveforms of both the user and the AI assistant, as well as controls, start and stop buttons to manage the conversation flow. Waveforms will showcase visual audio representations dynamically, indicating user and model activity. Text elements, user transcript, and model transcript will be populated with live transcriptions as conversations proceed. Finally, a script link is included at the end, pointing to app.js, ensuring that the HTML can execute JavaScript logic to handle real-time updates and interactions. This entire setup provides an interactive front-end, connecting users visually and functionally to the voice chat back-end. This JavaScript snippet begins by declaring variables for audio analysis and animations. The audio context represents the main interface to work with the Web Audio API, enabling audio processing. The Create Waveform function is responsible for visualizing audio data by generating a series of bars. Each bar's height dynamically changes based on audio input, providing visual feedback of sound levels, akin to what you might see if you were to visualize an equalizer. Updating these waveforms is handled by Update Waveform which processes frequency data from an audio source and maps this to the heights of each bar. Achieving smooth transitions, this function is a key part of rendering audio data visually. Audio files, you're gonna love this. It grabs raw frequency data, averages it over a set of bars, and scales it to a visual range 20 to 80 pixels. Overall, these waveforms provide immediate visual feedback on audio activity for both the user and the AI assistant, contributing to a more immersive and interactive chat experience. This JavaScript code sets the stage for user interaction with the UI, initializing key elements like the start and stop buttons, status indicators, and the audio waveforms. The suite of functions in FNS allows for on-the-fly HTML manipulations, abstracting common DOM operations like updating text, HTML content, attributes, styling, or even classes. This object is designed to be versatile, easily extending to support additional DOM operations as needed. User, I want to change some text dynamically. Code, no problem. Use manipulate element. Each function in FNS conforms to a predictable input-output pattern, ensuring actions are logged with success or error messages. By modularizing these operations, it becomes easier to maintain and extend the front-end logic, enhancing the interactive features of the voice chat application. These functions are key players in UX by managing UI components' behavior as conversations are initiated or being connected. Update status modifies a status message and visual styling of the alert box based on the current state, providing users with context and feedback during interactions. Set button loading elegantly swaps between normal and loading states for buttons, simplifying the user's flow from idle to active session initiation by adjusting button states and visuals based on the loading process. Together, both functions ensure smooth and informative transitions for users engaging with the application, reinforcing the application's responsiveness to user actions.
These functions handle the visual representation of active audio streams using waveforms, making it easier to understand which microphone or speaker is picking up sound. Start User Waveform initializes an audio processing context specifically for the user's microphone stream, creating an analyzer that feeds data about audio frequency to dynamically update the waveform bars. This ensures that the visual display of active microphone input is smoothly animated and continuously updated. Similarly, Start Model Waveform manages the analyzer for the model's audio output. It contains a media stream linked to the AI-generated audio, visualized in a separate audio element. By visually indicating sound activity, users get clear feedback on audio input-output activity, adding a layer of interaction that enhances the user interface's intuitiveness. In this snippet, Configure Data sets up the data channel communication, crucial for real-time data transfers between user and server. This function essentially primed the WebRTC data channel, DC, for both text and audio modalities linked to interacting tools. The configuration relays capabilities, i.e. functions like get page HTML and manipulate element, to the server, allowing for dynamic engagement with HTML elements through the WebRTC session. Each tool is paired with descriptors and parameters describing its potential actions. Such setup prepares the data channel to transmit and respond to specific calls, forming a backbone for interactive data exchange within the application, bridging audio, text, and component updates. The init function is the main orchestrator of establishing a WebRTC connection, engaging all required components to activate the real-time chat experience. Upon execution, one, it fetches a session token required for secure API communication, powering the voice chat features. Two, a RTC peer connection is created to facilitate real-time media communication. 3. The user's microphone stream is retrieved and fed into the connection, initializing visual waveforms in parallel. 4. A data channel, DC, is established, handling custom messages for various voice chat functionalities including transcripts, text interactions, and function calls using WebRTC events. 5. It negotiates a connection with an offer-answer exchange, setting up the real-time chat with the OpenAI API. This combination of steps integrates communication setup, enabling users to engage in an AI-powered voice chat. By forming connections, both media and data are handled fluently, showing off the full capabilities of WebRTC. The cleanup function gracefully terminates active sessions, reverting the interface to a standby state. This process includes closing the RTC peer connection, canceling any ongoing animations related to the audio waveforms, and shutting down the audio context to free up resources. Visual indicators, waveform bars are reset, ensuring the UI accurately reflects the disconnected state. It updates the status message and reverts button states, readying the application for a fresh interaction without hiccups or remnants from previous states. This housekeeping makes sure no ghost connections linger, keeping the application performant and primed for the next user interaction. The accompanying event listeners bind init and cleanup to user controls, ensuring these functions kick off as expected when buttons are pressed, streamlining the user's interaction experience with the application. Right now, listen to me, I've been trying to toad, and you know, like I'd like toading, the fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast with AI. I'd heard about it. It's easy. So, um, I came across 1000X Cursor course. And that's great. You know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just, it just worked. I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, 1000X, you're coding. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.